In this video, we're going to show how to use our motor control uh, development kit that you see here. This is our brushless DC motor control kit. And so I'm going to take it out of the box. And you see that it comes with a little quick start guide. Okay? And so, and besides that, I'll put this here. We'll have uh, the motor. We'll have an AC adapter. We also have a Uh, parts for um, 220 if you're not in uh, an area where they use 110 60 hertz and here's the kit it comes with a, a USB cable and a, a USB smart cable box here and it comes with a Xylo CD and the Xylog CD has the source code for the kit and also our Xylog IDE, which we call our ZDS2. Our Xylog Development Studio. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show how um, a customer would take the kit, plug it in, and run it. The, the controller on the board, which is our FMC 1600 is already pre-programmed from the factory. So you would not need to uh, program any code into the flash. So first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this in. Okay, AC adapter. Okay, and I'm going to plug the motor onto the board. And so, in this quick start guide, it tells you how to run this, uh, this whole thing. And it has like uh, information on, the, it gives an introduction, a kit summary, the requirements of your PC, the external uh, power su supply requirement. In this case, uh, it needs a power supply that can go up to 24 volts, three amps. Okay, and, um, and then it has a little uh, diagram of the kit and what the uh, switches and settings should be for the board, okay? So J4 should be on two and three, okay? J4, it's on two and three. J5 is on two and three. J6 is on two and three, okay? Switch one should be to the far left position, okay? Which is this way here. Switch two should be in the run position. So we'll put this in the run position, it's already there. And then potentiometer should be in the midpoint. So we'll put that in the midpoint. Okay. Uh, with the, the full kit user manual for this is UM0192, which you can download from our website at www.zilog.com. Okay. And then the next diagram shows you how to connect the wires to the board from the uh, motor. So essentially, you see that the green wire goes to C. So let's take green, goes to C. Okay, blue goes to B. And white, of course, goes to the A. The left, the left slug that's available. Okay. And next page. Okay. So now we connect the power supply to here. Okay. And you see when you plug that in, you see that both the red and green lights up. I'll do it again flashes once and then after that the green flashes only. Now we're going to connect the the bigger power supply to power up the which is the power for the FET and the motor. So the ground goes to P5 
positive goes to P4, okay, which is next to the fuse. And then it says slowly adjust the, uh, first we'll turn this on. So we'll turn this down, okay. So right now, zero voltage. Then we slowly turn this up. And you can hear the motor running. Let me turn this down. You hear it? Slow it down. So let's see. Let's turn this up to the 24 volt. Okay. Now. Now what you do is you can adjust the potentiometer here, okay, which is R7. You can turn it. You can hear it. Accelerate. So you can you hear it, you hear it turn. And then you can turn it the other way and it'll slow down. And then you see the S1 is for direction. Right now it's going um, clockwise. So now we'll have it go counterclockwise. I'll hold this. Okay, you can see that it switches uh, quickly. And let's say that you want, this is in run mode, so let's say we want to stop it. Once it stops, you'll see that the yellow LED flashes. But when it's in run mode, the yellow LED goes away and the green LED flashes. Okay. Change direction. And so this is how you run the brushless DC motor in standalone mode. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the Zilog IDE or the Zilog Development Studio, what we call our ZDS2 to uh, control the application. So what we'll do is, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to turn off the power. Just kind of power here. Okay. What is this? We're going to load. OK, the kit came with this CD, which has our ZDS2 and our product spec and manuals. So I'm going to install that into the PC here, to this laptop. Put the CD in there. While it's doing that, I'm going to connect, since this board is turned off, I'm going to connect the USB cable to the USB box. And then the whole thing that we call our USB smart cable. So now we plug this in. This is a six pin dual inline uh, connector, what we call our debug connector. And it's right here on the board. And it's keyed, so you can only put it in one way. And then on this side here, oh, now we have here, it says, uh, what do we want to do? We want to install the product. We want to install ZDS2. The rest of stuff is just documentation. I'm more interested in running it. So now it's going to start installing it. The wizard comes on. While it's doing that, I'm going to plug in this USB connector. And here, the wizard comes on, and you hit yes. The license agreement, you hit yes. And it says, uh, do you want to uh, choose a directory that contained previous install files? Do you want to overwrite it? Yes. I happen to have uh, put the ZDS2 uh, on the computer before. So I'm just going to overwrite it. It doesn't matter. So next. So now it's loading it. OK, and it's done. And uh, you can register online.
so that you get updates to the ZDF2 and also uh, you, it allows you to download the free software. Whenever the, ZF, the ZDF2 is upgraded, then we send out an email to all the users and then you come to our website at www.dialog.com and download the uh, software. It's free. Okay, and here it gives you a chance to uh, read the readme file and launch the ZDS2, and we'll do that. Okay, the ZDS, this is our ZDS2, our IDE, and it's getting loaded. The little advertisement pops up and then goes away. So let's go to the readme file. Okay, and it says, um, it, get, it talks about this version of the ZDS2. There's a little table of contents changes from the previous release, the compatibility, and that it is, does support the opto-isolated USB smart cable, which is this one here. And what Windows operating systems it uh, supports. Okay, the USB driver. Okay, and then it talks about any other application or OS issues that you should be aware of. Then there's some precautions and limitations. So please read everything. The runtime library, the IDE, and then it shows uh, this one bug that was fixed. And of course it shows all the other bugs that are not fixed. Okay, and that's the readme file. So you can read that at your leisurely time. So now we have our IDE open. Um, let's see, our demo shield is still here. So we're done. You can always install other uh, documentations, but um, and you can register online through there. But I'll leave that to you to do. And then I'm going to exit, exit out. Okay. So now. We're going to load the software program, compile it, and run it on this uh, platform. So first thing we do is find the project. So we open up the project. Okay. Let's see, we'll go to my computer. Go to preload. Go to program file. Go to Dialog, go to the ZDS2, Z8 Encore, Motor Control, go to Samples. Okay, these are some other, uh, this is a sample file that's written in assembly. This is one that's written in C. And then this is the motor demo, brushless DC motor demo, which we're using. Okay, go to source code. This is our project file, so we'll select that. And now the project's open. And you see that it has a main file, and it has a NIST file, and it has a, a different header files, include files, I should say. Okay. So, first thing we want to do is go to project, go to settings, okay. Make sure that the kit is checked off, and that you're not using a simulator. You can use a simulator, but uh, right now I'm demoing the kit. The communication. This is the serial number for this USB smart cable. Some users uh, may use more than one smart cable. They may have uh, two, uh, let's say another development kit here, and another smart cable, so you want to make sure you select the right one for this one, for this application, instead of the other one. Say OK. In the setup here. Okay, in this uh, demo, we're going to be using this external resonator, 20 megahertz. So let's hit external, 20 megahertz. Hit OK. Hit OK. Now, what we want to do is, um, I should say that, uh, okay, this, uh, these icons here is for creating a new uh, file. Open a folder. 
save the file that you're that you're editing currently open. In this case, we have main. So if you hit this, it'll save the main. This saves all the files that's in the project. We'll hit that. Okay, this is delete. We don't want to delete anything. It's print if you want to print the files. This one here is the workspace, and this, which is this area here, this workspace uh, shows all the files that are used in this project. So if you took that off because you didn't want to see it, then you have more space available. And then this one here is the output uh, window, which is down below. It shows you uh, results from when you do a build or when you're doing debugging or if you're doing a search in certain files. So if you were to click on this, then that goes away so you have a lot of room. So in this demo, I'm just going to leave that open and leave this open so you can see all the files. If you want to open a file, let's say the, the um, include file for the GPIOs, then you double click on it and it opens up the file. You can edit it, you know, see what's in there, close it. So let's say that if I wanted to, um, let's see, right now we're in debug mode, okay? And here, this icon's for compiling, assembling the file. So we'll hit that. And you see that it's um, complete. Let's say that if you want to, it only does a build, it doesn't do a link. So let's say if you were to do a, a full build, then it does a link also. And this one here, rebuilds all. So even though I'm working with this file, but if I want to uh, compile all these files and link them all together again, then I hit this one. I'm a pretty lazy guy, so I usually just hit rebuild all, unless you have like about 50 of these files, then you may think about that. The next one is to connect to the target. Right now, hardware-wise, it's connected to the application board, but not electrically um, to the Zedia 2 um, IDE. So let's do that. So click on it, and you see that it's initializing the driver and making the connection. Okay. This shows here that the target failed. It wasn't able to connect because we didn't turn on the power. So I shall turn on the power. So the power is now officially on. And so let's see if we can connect to the target. Now it says that it's connected. It gives all this information, the revision, the smart cable version, okay, the frequency that it's running. Okay. And now it's just connected. So this board now is connected to our um, ZDS2. Okay. And it's reading the inside of our chip because it has a, the connection goes to a single pin to the chip, and now we want to program the, uh, the flash that's, uh, that's on this chip with the firmware. So we hit download code, when it downloads it, it will program the flash. Now, this particular uh, MCU has some flash option bits in the flash um, array. And so in this case, we're using some of those uh, flash bits. So uh, when this comes up, you just say yes, you want to continue. If you say no, it'll just stop and, and go back to what it was before. So it's, so it's programmed the flash. And now here is reset. So let's say if you were running and you want to reset, that's this button here. It's already reset, so uh, let's see this. So now it's pointing to the beginning of program execution at main. And this button here is to go which means to start execution, wherever it is. Okay, so right now you see that the yellow light is on, it's blinking, so it's in, it's in the stop, it's in the, in the halted stop mode. So you hit, let's have switch two go to run, and now it's running the motor. Let's say that if we wanted to halt the execution, we can do that, it'll break. But if you want to continue again um, using ZDS2, you will have to reset it and then hit go again. Okay. What you could do here is you may want to set a breakpoint. 
here. So you double click on the border here and you get a little red circle and this sets up a breakpoint at this location. Let's say you want to set a breakpoint at this location and at this location. Actually, let's say you want to set it here. One thing nice about our dialog of ADS2, you can set as many breakpoints as you want. Now also, please note that there's a blue dot on any line that's active. If you compile the program and you see that there's a line that doesn't have a dot, that means that line is not active. There's no executable code there. As you can see here, this is a comment, so there's nothing there. Okay, so let's reset and go. So it stops at the first breakpoint, but uh, I want to, let's say I want to take a look at everything, and then I want to continue going from that breakpoint, so I hit go again. Okay, so it will run to the next uh, routine. And uh, then do that again. Okay, it's at the next one. Then it goes to the next one. Okay. And let's say that we're uh, out of breakpoints. So we just run it. And now the motor is running. Let's say we want to res let's say we want to stop. That's the stop. Halt the execution. Okay. Now you notice that it's at this line here. So if we want a single step, we just sing this is for single stepping. Okay. As you can see there. So let's say that we want to uh, reset again. Okay. Let's move the window a little bit. Let's say that I had put these breakpoints in, but now I didn't really don't want them anymore. So this is to remove all breakpoints. I click on that, and all the breakpoints are gone now. These other ones is if you want to enable or disable the breakpoints, but in this case I just want to remove them. Okay. And I just hit go. And now the whole thing just runs. So usually what I recommend is that if, you, if you're going to disconnect or anything, make sure you hit reset so it goes to the default reset condition. Hit reset. And then this icon here is for stop debugging. That means that you're disconnecting the ZDS2 to the application target. So you click here and then you see that all of these icons go away and it's not connected anymore. Now, let's say that I wanted to connect again, you know, connect, download the code, reset and run. But let's say that I'm a very lazy guy. One thing that's really nice is that, let's say if I hit go, it will do all of these things automatically. and then it starts running. So it's really nice. Okay. Sometimes instead of hitting stop and then hitting reset, you can just hit reset, and then the program pointer goes back to the start of program execution. Let's say that if I wanted to change something, so let's say that I edited something and I put something in here. Let's do this uh, semicolon. When I hit the reset, says that the software's been modified, do you want to rebuild? And say yes. And then it's going to recompile, link, what's it, download the code, say yes, for the option bit. And now it's ready to go. I could have hit this one and go, and it would have done the same thing and then run it. But sometimes I kind of like to just get to this point, make sure that everything's okay, Check the compile with the build tab. Everything looks okay. And then run it. I usually will check the reset just to put the whole uh, MCU and the application back to the default uh, reset state. And then I hit the stop debugging 
So then now the ZDF2 is not connected to the application. So close the project. Close the ZDF2. And this closes our video demo on how to use the brushless DC motor development kit. Thank you.